hostage video. BBC does not normally broadcast hostage video and we're not going to give the names of the three individuals who were part of this message. But we have seen and heard and translated what they had to say. So let us look at some of the details of what is a distressing uh, video to emerge. We're joined by our diplomatic correspondent, Paul Adams. Paul, what can you tell us about this video? It's really hard to watch. Three women. We have confirmed their identities, but we are not, as you say, going to name them at the moment. They are sitting in a white tiled room on chairs, dressed rather as the hostages were the other day in what appeared to be Palestinian costumes. And one of them speaks, and she speaks with real fury. And she addresses her remarks to Benjamin Netanyahu, Israel's prime minister. She says that they have been in captivity for 23 days. That suggests to me that maybe this video was recorded yesterday. She also refers to a press conference that the families of the hostages had given the previous day. That, we think, was two days ago, in which she says, we know there was supposed to be a ceasefire. You were supposed to let us all go. Now, yes, there was a press conference. And yes, clearly, there's a lot of talk about ceasefires. But nothing from the Israeli side, nothing from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to suggest that such a deal had actually been struck. So that, to my way of thinking, suggests that that's what they've been told happened. They probably don't have any access, independent access to information. They are entirely dependent on what their Hamas captors are telling them. They appear to be healthy. They do not appear to have been abused or injured. But the, the woman who speaks is extremely emotional and she becomes almost uncontrollably emotional at the end. She says that the army was not there to protect them on the 7th of October. No one arrived, no one guarded us and we are innocent civilians. She also says, addressing her remarks to Benjamin Netanyahu, isn't, in, isn't it enough to slaughter everyone? Not enough Israeli civilians killed? And she just ends her remarks by saying, let us go back to our families now, now, now. It's really hard to watch. It's very distressing, first of all, for the families, uh, when we're hoping they have been told about this in as careful a way as possible. It will at least give them a sign that their loved ones are alive. Indeed. Um, and as you say, that they look healthy. But it's also deeply, deeply distressing. And the Israeli view on these videos and what Hamas is doing with the hostages, Prime Minister Netanyahu has called it psychological terrorism, using them to pursue their war aims. Yes, it's hard to dispute a characterization like that. This is not a video recorded, you know, out of free will. This is a, a video recorded by three women who have been held for 23 days in conditions that we can only guess at. We do have a little insight, courtesy of the other hostages who were released, who said they were being generally well treated. But once they got to the once, once they, they got, got inside, once, once indeed, not on the way, not on was, the way. Yeah, yeah. Which the, the, was the, hell. that journey from the places where they were taken to the places where they were held was clearly extremely traumatic, and everything that has happened to them for the last three weeks has been utterly traumatic. So you have to obviously take that into account when you read these words. These are the words. That, they may well reflect some of the tr trauma and the anger that they themselves feel, but maybe they also reflect some of the things that they have been asked to say. We just don't know. But the impact of this is going to be huge. It is going to add to the pressure on Mr. Netanyahu to do more, to get hostages out. It is going to cause yet another wave of trauma in this country where wave upon wave of trauma has already been crashing around on the population. You know, this, this story has the, has the ability to do that to us every few days. And this is just going to add to that. And, you know, there you have three, three women begging, begging their government to bring them home.
Yes, just deepening the trauma of so many. And it's not just the families and loved ones with the hostages. It's there's so many in this country who themselves are torn about what has been happening. Benjamin Netanyahu met some of the families. He reassured them, reassured the nation that Israel has two priorities, he said, destroying Hamas and bringing the hostages home. And his view was that this, this intensifying war, the ground operations, would help. He said the only way to bring the hostages home is not that ceasefire that the women were no doubt told to say yeah. in, in that video, given, as you say, there's so little mm -hmm. knowledge, but by intensifying the pressure. And indeed, the, the, the Defence Minister, Yoav Gallant, made exactly the same point. That is the way to force Hamas into some kind of deal. It was interesting when Mr Netanyahu spoke at that press conference two days ago, and he did. He listed those two priorities, and it was in that order. Destroying Hamas and bringing the hostages home. Clearly, his main priority still, as far as we can make out, is to destroy Hamas. The, you know, many, many people in this country are asking, how can you achieve both of those? Is that even remotely possible? And is it more likely that the more military pressure you bring to bear, the more you send troops into those uh, congested areas where the hostages might be being held, the more airstrikes are conducted over Gaza, the more likely it is that actually hostages will come to harm. And indeed, another statement from ha Hamas was this morning, in response to the latest signs of the Israelis moving in on the ground, was precisely that. The more you do this, the more you're likely to harm hostages. So this is an awful, awful psychological game which the captors are playing. And they are hoping still with so many cards in their hands, more than 200 people, that somehow this is going to have an, an, an impact on the Israeli government. So far, we have seen no sign of that. Is there something going on behind the scenes? Maybe. We know that many, many actors, including the Gulf state of Qatar, are trying very, very hard to orchestrate a deal in which there could be a release of hostages, maybe in exchange for the release of Palestinian prisoners held in Israeli jails. But at the moment, we have no sign that any of that is imminent. This is just going to add to the, the pressure and the despair and, once again, the trauma surrounding all of those questions. Yes, and that Friday night when Israel expanded its ground operations, it came suddenly. Uh, a diplomat briefed on the negotiations through the Gulf state of Qatar, uh, expressed regrets, saying we were so close, yeah. that, but said there were still some issues in dispute. And, of course, we know those are very big issues. One of them, most of all, that ceasefire that the women in the video today mm. talked about. And, Paul, just before we came on air, there were reports swirling again that even now, even though there had been a fear that these talks would stop, that there are really crucial discussions going on now as we speak in Qatar, focusing, we believe, just on the civilians. Yes, I, th I think there are conversations going on everywhere. There was even uh, uh, talk of uh, Hamas officials being in Cairo, the Egyptian capital. You know, again, part of this complex web of negotiations and discussions, which continues all the time. And, you know, it may sound almost uh, bizarre to, uh, to, the, to the audience to think that a war could be raging and conversations could still be having indirectly between the, the, the warring parties about uh, the possible exchange of prisoners. But these things do happen even in the midst of, of wars. And so we, couldn't, we can't exclude the fact that something of that kind may still emerge. And it may be that the Hamas pe people who are holding those women, maybe they thought that such a thing was imminent. Uh, you know, the, the truth of these negotiations is being held by so few people, yes, it's so and it's true. only when the deal is done that anyone gets to know. I suppose the one glimmer of hope that the families can hold on to is the general view that these hostages, and they're being held by Hamas, also Islamic Jihad, and there were reports that they mm -hmm. were in the hands of, of Gazans who mm -hmm. just went and grabbed people, is that they only matter if they're alive. Yes. They want to keep them alive. They want these bargaining chips, as terrible as it is to say to say that. And, Paul, you mentioned the details of it was a, a, a white tiled room. Yeah. Many eyes will be on these these videos, most of all their families, to see for signs that of distress, of the health. Had they lost weight? How did they look? Did they look stressed? And the women had different expressions without going into more details. But was this, in a, if it was, is widely believed, in one of those deep, deep tunnels, it was very well appointed. appointed if yes, you can it, use that word. It yes. Di it, it didn't look it like the a cave. It wasn't a cave. It didn't look like the kind of tunnels that we have seen evidence of in the past. Rocks, it didn't cement. look. It didn't look dank. It didn't look sandy. It looked clean, 
tiled white. Uh, so I'm sure many, many eyes will be poring over that, trying to see any signs. There were, there were no obvious signs, really, about the kind of place they were being held. Gaza is a, is a small place, as you know, a very small place, but it's also a very congested place, and there are many, many places where you could hide civilians. And we don't know, you're right, we don't know who is holding who. I suspect that by now, Hamas being the major uh, group in Gaza, that if anyone, if anyone has, was freelancing on this hostage taking, probably the hostages have been gathered and maybe sort of held centrally. But, you know, we just don't know. Mm. Um, and could this be the prelude to, to, to any more hostage releases? Again, it's just impossible to know, but it is also just impossible to ignore. So the agonizing, so, so agonizing. One of the many very tragic human dimensions of uh, this very, very ugly, intensifying war. Paul Adams, I know you'll get more information for us on this and all the other developing stories today. But thank you very much for joining us on BBC News. And to confirm again, if you've just joined us in the last hour, Hamas's military wing has released another video, a hostage video on its Telegram channel. We are not broadcasting the video. It is not BBC policy to usually broadcast the video. We're not giving the identities, but we've been discussing what the three women, one of the women who spoke, had to say. We'll continue to try to get more details, not just about this video, but the impact on the families, on Israelis, and most of all, on those intense and highly sensitive negotiations to bring the hostages home. Let's take a look at other, the other top stories this hour. Israel says it has expanded its ground and air operations.